Okay guys, this is a tip in 10 for Browseware, getting Daz 3D characters into Browseware. So you're gonna go ahead and create your avatar. <clears throat> um, I suggest you use the basic texture if you're going to use the texture within Browseware. But right now I'm just gonna go through the posing and the naming uh, for your avatars. And the poses so we're gonna give her some poses here in your timeline uh, in your keyframe timeline not in animate so we're gonna go ahead and check out browseware um, just basic instructions on the site uh, they are there if you want to go ahead and follow how to get an uh, OBJ and FBX model uh, third-party models as they're called in um, V Stitcher. So right now we're gonna do OBJ. The OBJ format's a little bit simpler. The FBX, um, we're gonna do that in the second part of this video. But right now we're gonna keep it OBJ. As you can see in the support for Browseware, you have specific instructions. But what I'm gonna do is walk you through, and basically you're gonna see, um, you know, what you can do without getting the hiccups. So right now, um, the OBJ, the polygon count, is uh, going to affect the performance, which is why I do base OBJ. So if you are familiar with DAS, then you'll know that you are going to export your character in the base resolution. This is one of the key things that help you um, move a little bit faster in vStitcher so it's not having to... Uh, deal with all of the geometry. So right now we're gonna go ahead and jump into actually posing the avatar and naming the poses and getting your um, arrangement points or your actual uh, joint set up in Browseware. So here we go. So one of the key things we have to do is to uh, create the naming functions for the OBJ. For the OBJ file, uh, the naming is necessary for the FBX file. It's not necessary because it's embedded into the file, but it's a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do is show you what this naming is. If you can see at the bottom, it's the model pose. Uh, and then the name of the pose. So if you have a model, I think our model's name is, <clears throat> well, I forgot her name, honestly. This, is, this was recorded a long time ago. But we're going to name the model, and then we're going to name the model underscore pose underscore name of the pose in OBJ format. So let's dive in. We have our A pose base model. And remember, your resolution should always be base resolution. So we're going to go ahead and name this model and save her Frida. I don't know where I come up with these names, but Frida is the name of the model. And um, like I said, I'm just keeping the, te the textures to a minimum. And we're going to go ahead and jump in here and give her some poses. So you can see what we have to do. So I'm going to go to my pose library. I'm just going to pull in some regular poses. They have to have the model highlighted. So you have to highlight the model before the pose. Uh, the pose menu will appear when you have that model highlighted. So once I highlight the model, then I will see that there are poses available for the model. And I'm going to do that right this second. We're going to modify a little bit of her specs though, just so she could be a little bit taller and leaner for the second part of the, the tutorial, which would be putting clothing from Browseware into DAS 3D.
Okay, now that she's all modified, I'm going to go ahead and give her her own dedicated folder so that we can just have an easy path to where these files exist. Um, so we're going to name her pose files and then uh, I go back and just give her her own separate uh, separate A pose which I'll probably rename this A pose after I give her uh, the selected poses. So I'm going to just name her Frida.obj. You'll see that in the next segment. Um, so right now I have her A pose locked in. I'm going to go ahead and select another pose. Once I click on her body, I can see uh, all of the other poses that apply to this avatar. Okay, we like this one, so we're going to go ahead and go for it, and we're going to save it. We're going to export it as an OBJ. So I'm just going to rename this uh, Pose 1. And then I'm going to give her another pose. I like these simple poses because they don't interfere with the clothing too much and you can still get a little bit of a flair to it. So we're going to go ahead and make this pose too. And I'll just rename that A pose to just the regular avatar name. I am uh, just considering, you know, appropriate poses for clothing. And we're going to do one more pose. Pose three. And I'm not saving surfaces. So if you see that my surface is, is, is uh, ticked off, you can save surfaces, but I would suggest you only use the generic surfaces that come with the, the um, Genesis 8 model. So right now I have her three uh, poses saved in the correct naming format, but now I need to go back and change it to just the model name. So let me go back into my folder and I'm going to change the OBJ file in just the avatar's name. That A pose should have just been uh, the regular avatar name only, not with A pose or pose on it. So let's go ahead and change that back. Okay, I'm just kind of going backwards and undoing the three poses and I'm just going to rename it uh, to Frida and then you'll see uh, Frida and then we can leave that other one in there doesn't matter as long as I have one Frida that says OBJ again surface is not written make sure your avatar is in base format <clears throat> this is the old version of uh, V Stitcher during the time of this video but everything still applies when you open and import your avatar, you're going to go to the plus sign. I'm going to delete this avatar with the minus sign. And then I'm going to go to the plus sign. I'm going to import Frida. So we gave her her own folder. Let's go back to where that is. And just Frida OBJ. So now she comes in like this. I'm going to check that everything is in centimeters and that it's correct. And when you highlight one of the um, the orientation pins that are here, when you highlight them, they will give you a tooltip for the location to where they are. Try to follow that exactly as possible, just as close as you can to where you can get it so you don't run into problems. On the site, there are better location instructions but if you notice I am putting it exactly where I see it on the um, the little tooltip cartoon in the side for the elbow it should be aligned with the shoulder that that one should be a little bit more aligned with the shoulder for this one the hip the Genesis figure has like a little bit of a dip 
uh, this is why I like these avatars because they have a realism that kind of give you a little bit more guidance of where the body landmarks are. So for her hips, she has a little sort of a dip for the hip. So that's why I put that pin. And for the knee and the ankle, you have to put it on the side, not in the front of the knee, because then you'll get some weird things happening when you try to simulate. So once everything has got a green check and we're symmetrically uh, positioning everything and this is good, if you notice, all of her poses imported with her. This is part of uh, why you name everything uh, the way that you name it. So we're going to go ahead now that we've saved the avatar. We're going to go ahead and just cycle through her poses to make sure everything comes out what how we want it. And there it is. And there it is. So now that when we have our garment simulated, we can just cycle through these poses and she will just transform into those poses uh, the same way the other avatars did. And that is pretty much it for this video.